Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Scott Weiner. I have the honor of representing San Francisco and San Mateo County in the California State Senate. Uh, and I'm joined here uh, today with uh, my partner in SB 785, Assemblymember Lorena Gonzalez Fletcher, uh, as well as uh, Senator Kevin DeLeon. Uh, we'll be joined shortly by Assemblymember David Chu, who is also a co author. Uh, moments ago, the, uh, the California State Senate uh, passed and gave final approval to SB 785 with an overwhelming bipartisan vote. Uh, last week, uh, the Assembly uh, also passed uh, the bill with a, an even more overwhelming uh, bipartisan vote. Uh, SB 785 is about uh, ensuring that immigrants who are victims of crimes or witnesses to crimes feel safe going to court to testify and making sure that immigrants don't believe that going to court to testify means that they're going to get deported. We know that ICE is in our courthouses. Uh, we know that since the presidential election, with all the anti-immigration rhetoric, uh, that reports of crimes in immigrant communities have dropped, that immigrants are hesitant to report crimes, hesitant to go to court because they believe that that might result in getting deported and separating them from their families. Uh, and that harms public safety for all Californians. No one should be afraid to go to court to testify. And right now, there are immigrants who go to court, take the stand, and attorneys get up there uh, and question them about their immigration status, even when it has nothing to do with the case. SB 785 uh, will prohibit attorneys from asking witnesses on the stand about their immigration status uh, unless the attorney goes to the judge ahead of time uh, in the judge's uh, offices and shows why that questioning is relevant. Uh, if, if it's relevant, the attorney will be allowed to ask the questions, uh, but if it's irrelevant, which it usually is, uh, the attorney will not be able to ask the question. So no more uh, of this Wild West situation where attorneys go in the court and essentially harass immigrant witnesses uh, by asking them about their immigration status. Um, I want to, again, thank uh, my colleagues in the Assembly for co-authoring. Uh, this bill. I also want to thank and acknowledge uh, San Francisco District Attorney uh, George Gascon uh, for sponsoring the bill and for bringing this issue uh, to our attention. Um, and uh, we look forward to uh, advocating to the governor about why uh, he should sign uh, the bill. Uh, buenos días y bienvenidos. Uh, hace unos momentos el Senado uh, pasó uh, el proyecto de ley SB 785 uh, es una ley para proteger a los inmigrantes que uh, van a los tribunales a testificar como víctimas o como testigos. Ahora uh, muchos inmigrantes uh, tienen miedo de ir a los tribunales uh, porque piensan que van a ser deportados. Uh, sabemos que la migra está en nuestros tribunales uh, en California. Uh, y ahora hay unos abogados que les ponen preguntas uh, a los uh, inmigrantes uh, en los tribunales sobre su estatus migratorio. Y no es relevante uh, a, los, um, a los casos uh, y, uh, no, uh, y queremos que eso no, no pase uh, porque crea una um, situación de miedo. Uh, 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 este proyecto de ley uh, provee que si un abogado quiere poner, un, uh, poner preguntas sobre el estatus migratorio de un testigo, uh, primero, primero tiene que ir al juez y pedir permiso a uh, hacerlo. Um, y la, el propósito de este proyecto de ley es proteger a los inmigrantes y asegurar que los inmigrantes se sienten uh, cómodos ir a, a, a los tribunales a testificar. Uh, I now uh, would like to uh, ask uh, Assemblymember Lorena Gonzalez Fletcher, who's been our partner on the bill from the beginning, to say a few words. Assemblymember. Thank you. So, uh, coming from the southernmost portion of the state, the border community, this is a uh, great victory so far. We hope to get it signed because this isn't just about victims. Um, it's important, obviously, we all know how important it is for victims to, to come forward and not to be afraid of. of, of testifying in court and it's something we've we've seen a decline in with the Trump administration but it's also about witnesses of crime 
So we know, and this goes beyond just my community, but we know if somebody has witnessed a crime and we need them to come forward to testify that if they're afraid their immigration status is going to be used against them in open court, that they're going to walk out of a courtroom and an ICE agent would have heard them admit that they are in fact not here legally, that they could get picked up, we know that witnesses won't come forward either. And that affects every community. So this is a huge, huge um, step forward for my community, which is a mixed status community, where there are plenty of people who have been afraid of our legal system, especially since um, this president has, has taken over. It will allow them to, to, to go forward, to report crime, to not be afraid that some bad attorney is going to just use that against them and make them fearful for their livelihood because they've been a victim of crime. But it's important for all communities when we have witnesses in every community that might not have the documentation that makes them comfortable being in a courtroom. So thank you, um, Senator Weiner, for your leadership on this. It's a good bill. It, it uh, was preceded by, by a bill we did about civil litigation a few years ago, and I think that this will help make our courts safer for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I now uh, want to uh, bring up uh, my colleague in the Senate, uh, Senator Kevin DeLeon. Uh, and Senator De Leon, uh, who until very recently was the uh, leader of the Senate, uh, when I came in as a new senator, we of course uh, faced a new reality in terms of the fear in our immigrant communities. Uh, and Senator De Leon has been a, just a tremendous leader uh, and taking the bull by the horns immediately uh, to make clear that California stands uh, with our immigrant neighbors. So Senator De Leon. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I'll be really short. I, I do want to thank uh, very much uh, Senator Scott Weiner from San Francisco, uh, my very good friend uh, from San Diego, uh, Lorena Gonzalez Fletcher, and San Francisco Assemblymember uh, David Chu uh, for your very strong leadership. Um, because Senator Scott Weiner uh, is absolutely correct. Uh, your immigration status is nobody's business when you're in a court of law whether you're a witness to a crime or whether you are worse a victim to a crime, whether it's a prosecutor or whether it's the attorney on the other side, uh, questioning you with regards to your legal status and attempting to intimidate you because of your legal status knows no place in the court of law in California. So I just want to say to uh, Senator Scott Weiner, thank you very much for your very strong, strong leadership on this issue. Again. Your legal status is not germane to the case that's pending before a court of law. Just very quickly in Spanish, quisiera darle las gracias al senador Scott Wiener de San Francisco por su liderazgo sobre un tema tan importante, particularmente eh, durante un ambiente muy polarizante y, y polémico debido a las, las políticas y la, la retórica repugnante de este presidente y este fiscal general Jeff Sessions. Eh, quiero ag agradecer a Scott Wiener eh, por su valentía de promover esta política que en el futuro no muy lejano este, no va a permitir, va a prohibir, mejor dicho, este, el, 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 este, el, el, el uso o mejor dicho, el estatus este, migratorio de víctimas o de testigos de este, un crimen. Así que a mi amigo de San Francisco, muchas gracias por tu liderazgo. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, I want to uh, bring up uh, my uh, assembly member who represents me. Uh, uh, representing the eastern uh, half of San Francisco, Assemblymember David Chu, who's been a co-author of this bill. And Assemblymember Chu uh, has uh, just an incredible track record for so many years uh, passing legislation to protect immigrants, whether immigrants who are tenants, immigrants in the workplace, uh, back to when we were on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors together, uh, ensuring that immigrants with kids in public schools are able to participate in the school system. So Assemblymember Chu. Thank you, Senator. Let me first just thank my colleague uh, and my San Francisco Senator for his leadership and doggy leadership over many, many years for our immigrant communities. Um, I want to just add two things to this conversation. First, I speak as a former member of law enforcement. I'm a former criminal prosecutor in the San Francisco District Attorney's Office, and I know, as anyone does, if you go into any courthouse in the state of California, you will see the diversity of the world. You will see so many members of our immigrant communities who need to be part of our legal system in order for us to say that there is true justice under the law in California. 
if we don't have these protections, that is threatened. And there have been so many law enforcement officials around the state who have talked about the importance of ensuring that our immigrant communities feel safe in coming to our courthouses. The police chief of Los Angeles reported recently that in the first year after Donald Trump was elected president, we saw a significant drop in Los Angeles in the percentage of sexual assault and domestic violence cases that were reported by our immigrant communities. I can tell you as a former DA, if our immigrant witnesses and victims of crimes do not feel safe coming to courthouses, we are all less safe. And that is why this is so incredibly important. I also want to mention that early last year, March 2017, the chief of the California Supreme Court, Justice Tani uh, Kantil Sakaui, she sent a letter to U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions expressing her concerns over reports of immigrant agents stalking undocumented immigrants in our California courthouses, and I quote, our courthouses serve as a vital forum for ensuring access to justice, for protecting public safety. Courthouses should never be used as bait in the necessary enforcement of our country's immigration laws. It is so important that this law passes, and with that, very much hope that the governor will be able to sign it, and I'm very grateful to our colleagues, in particular Senator Weiner, for his leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman. Uh, and then finally, uh, I want to bring up Chris Sanchez from the uh, Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights, which is uh, just a really terrific uh, advocacy organization for immigrants, an organization that has stood by our side since the very, very beginning of this bill. So, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Christopher Sanchez. I'm a policy advocate with CHIRLA, the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights, directly representing immigrant families across the state of California. Uh, we're very pleased with the outcome of today's vote. We send a very strong message in a bipartisan fashion that justice is needed in California and we will do nothing to hinder that. Uh, we know that the Trump administration has taken uh, a different approach to have, ensuring that everyone has justice regardless of their status. Uh, and we're very pleased with the outcome of the today's vote. We look forward to urging the governor to sign this piece of legislation to ensure that all immigrants are able to have a, additional protection when they enter into a California courthouse. Thank you. Perdón. Okay, that, uh, that concludes the press conference. We're happy to answer any questions, and uh, everyone will be available uh, afterwards. So again, thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, so uh, this, we first learned about the situation out of San Francisco when the San Francisco District Attorney's Office came to us and reported uh, that there were some uh, defense attorneys who were uh, questioning prosecution witnesses about their immigration status uh, and were doing so even if it was very clearly irrelevant uh, to the case. And it was having a really chilling effect on the willingness of uh, uh, victims of crimes and witnesses to come forward and testify. Uh, we uh, have since learned that it has been happening in some other counties uh, as well. Uh, so we, we know it's been happening. And the good thing is it's part of this process. We worked with um, all sides, the prosecution, the prosecutors, the public defenders, defense attorneys, plaintiffs' attorneys, uh, and uh, I think we've come to a good consensus about the bill, uh, and, and I think everyone uh, recognizes uh, that, that this is an important step. What's this have a defense attorney who wants to maintain that sort of chilling effect from just calling ICE? Uh, from calling? Well, uh, in terms of violating this law, that, uh, you know, ultimately they could be referred to the state bar, uh, for doing that, uh, and we know the state bar is considering a, uh, its own rule uh, of professional conduct to reflect what we passed here uh, today. So there can be some very severe consequences for attorneys who uh, violate uh, this type of rule. Uh, you know, the same is true of when you have a, a, um, a victim of uh, rape who is testifying in court, you're not allowed to ask that victim of rape about his or her sexual history without first going to the judge and showing why it's relevant and getting a ruling. And so that person, that attorney, could be disciplined for violating that rule as well. 
Um, in terms of someone calling ICE, we, you know, we can't stop people uh, from calling uh, ICE. Uh, we, you know, all we can do is do what's in our power uh, to protect immigrants. There's always going to be some bad actors, but we're doing what we can to minimize that risk for immigrants. Uh, I'm very sensitive to that, and we have an open court process where the press or anyone else can come in and see what's going on. But we do have limited exceptions to that. I mentioned when a, a, a rape victim is testifying in court, the, the, the defense attorney can't just get up and say, tell me about your sexual history. They have to go first into the judge's office with the other side there and say, I want to ask a question about sexual history. This is why it's relevant, the court that makes a ruling. That is already outside of public view. This is essentially the same procedure. So it's a very limited exception to the rule. Uh, and you know, you have to balance our shared desire to have a very open process with the reality that if immigrants fear going to court. If immigrants think that if I go to court, they're going to ask me about my immigration status and I'm going to get deported, they're not going to go to court. And, cry, and, and people who commit crimes will walk free. Um, it'll make us all less safe. So we think this is a very limited, narrow exception, uh, and, and it balances um, all of our competing values. Uh, no, uh, tenía confianza que uh, uh, suficientes senadores uh, iban a apoyar al proyecto de ley uh, para pasarlo. Uh, porque hace uh, el año pasado el Senado uh, votó um, a apoyar uh, SB 785. Uh, tenemos uh, apoyo de demócratas, de republicanos, uh, uh, mucha gente uh, diversa. Uh, entiende la importancia de proteger a los inmigrantes uh, que testifican en los tribunales. Uh, bueno, con, con, con Donald Trump y Jeff Sessions uh, es difícil uh, dar, darles confianza a los inmigrantes uh, porque hay, hay esta administración uh, está um, creando miedo in, 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 con intención uh, y en California lo que podemos hacer es resistir y decir no, vamos a proteger, vamos a hacer lo que podemos hacer uh, para proteger a los inmigrantes. Es difícil, pero estamos haciendo lo que uh, tenemos el poder de hacer. Okay, anything else? Uh, uh, yes, um, according to the San Francisco city attorney, and, uh, and I, I, I believe in LA as well, but I would I recommend calling the San Francisco district attorney's office. Uh, they have, you know, I, I don't, sometimes it's sensitive and they can't talk publicly about it, uh, but the San Francisco district attorney's office has made clear to us that cases have been jeopardized, and we've heard that in other counties as well. Uh, we know that since this election, um, you know, people, you know, people who are women who are victims of domestic violence uh, in the Latino community, uh, have, we've seen a drop in, re in even reporting, let alone going to court. So people are living in fear right now, uh, and so it doesn't take much uh, to push people over the edge so that they don't want to come to court because uh, they don't want to get deported. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, this bill uh, has gotten, we got about half of the Republicans in the Senate voted for it. Uh, and in the uh, Assembly, it was the same thing. Only one Republican in the Assembly voted against it. So, uh, you know, Republicans like Democrats uh, want, um, want public safety and want to make sure that people feel comfortable going to court. So this is a common sense bipartisan measure and I'm proud of what we did. So thank you very much, everyone.